comes from understanding karma, understanding and believing in karma, accepting karma. So you understand that karma works. We do actions and those actions leave imprints on our mind which stay in the mind until some point in the future when the com causes and conditions come together, the imprints ripen and we have some kind of experience as a result of that. So they say regret is similar to the way we would feel if we unknowingly swallowed something that was poisonous. So that's the feeling of regret. That's the first power. The second power is refuge. A refuge is, a, is a, an attitude, a state of mind that comes about by learning what the Buddha taught and feeling confidence, feeling trust in the Buddha and his teachings, um, agreeing with them and wanting to follow them. Um, so that's just in general what it means to take refuge, very simply speaking. Um, so if you're a Buddhist, then the second power would involve renewing your uh, your, your refuge or a sense of commitment to the Buddha and his teachings. But if you're not a Buddhist, then um, you may have other objects of faith that you have faith or trust or confidence in and that you take as your guides and wish to follow. So um, so you could just renew your, your uh, determination to follow those objects of your faith. And it can also involve generating or renewing your wish to benefit others, your feelings of compassion and love and kindness towards others and the wish to not harm them and the wish to help them. Then the third of the four powers is what I call remedy. Uh, and this involves doing something positive or virtuous to counteract the negative thing you've done by creating this bad karma. So you can do traditional virtuous things like saying prayers or reciting mantras or meditation on loving kindness or meditation on other aspects of the path. Um, but you could also be creative and find your own ways of doing something virtuous that is a countermeasure to the negative thing you've done. Like for example, if you did something that was like stealing or cheating, then you could give money. You could give a donation to charity or to some good cause. So generally we need to do something positive, something virtuous to oppose or counteract the negative thing we've done. Then the fourth power is the power of resolution or determination. And that involves um, generating in your mind some kind of determination about refraining from doing the same thing again in the future. So this is really, really important because if we do something negative and then we say, oh, I'm sorry, and we do some purification, but then we go back and do it again and again and again, then it's not so wise or helpful. So there needs to be at least the wish to, uh, even if we can't get to the point where we'll never do it again, but at least to lessen the amount of time we do it, the, you know, to decrease the incidence of doing that same action again. So they say, you can, uh, if, if it is something that you feel, I will never do it again, and you can make that kind of promise and keep it, then okay. But if it's something that you have been doing habitually and you wouldn't be able to just stop it altogether, then you could make a promise to not do it for a limited period of time, like the next five minutes, or the next hour, or the, you know, half a day. So, so find something that's reasonable, that's within your abilities, and try to just be aware and mindful for that period of time and try to refrain from doing that action again. So there are particular practices in the Tibetan tradition for purification that are all sort of written up and set up that include these four powers. One of the more famous, popular ones is the practice of Vajrasattva. It's a particular Buddha figure that we visualize, and then we generate these, these powers, regret, thinking about the things we've done, we feel regret for, generating refuge and the wish to benefit other beings. Then um, for the power of the remedy, we recite a mantra. There's a mantra associated with Vajrasattva. There's a long one that's got 100 syllables. And there's also a short one that is very simple, Om Vajrasattva Hum. 
And so you recite that mantra, and that's particularly good to purify, to clear out negative karma that's been created. Then at the end of the practice, you generate a resolution to refrain from doing the action again. Another one is the 35 Buddhas, which there's a tanka here, uh, showing the 35 Buddhas. So that practice involves, again, first thinking about the things you want to purify, generating regret for them, and then taking refuge in the 35 Buddhas, and then reciting their names. So reciting the names of these 35 Buddhas, and if you can, doing prostrations to them at the same time, bowing to them, that is for the third power, the power of the remedy. So that's a very virtuous thing, to recite names of Buddhas and also prostrate to them. And then you go through a prayer of confession of the negative things you've done, and then at the end, generate a resolution to not do it again. And like I say, it's good if we can if we can do a purification practice every night, because probably during the day we have done things that were negative, and if we don't purify, then um, another thing that happens with karma is that it it multiplies. So. Uh, if you do something negative one day, and then you don't do anything to purify it, by the second day it's multiplied, it's become worse, heavier. And that happens each day that we don't purify. So the sooner we can purify, the better. So that's why it's a good idea to do it at night, to um, purify any negative karma we've done during that day, so that at least we stop it from multiplying until the next day. I think the first thing that I started to do in terms of a daily practice was actually starting... I used to do some meditation before I was a Buddhist, but it was more like set my motivation as, as taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, for the sake of all sentient beings. So then that would be the main thing. I think that was for a good few months. Then um, I was interested in um, prostrations. I got very drawn to doing that. And um, then the, the whole thing with purification, um, which I didn't really know about, but as I did prostrations, I learned more. So I did the 35 Buddha practice. Every day, I would do at least 35. I used to do like 100 every day. Sometimes it would, because of when I started to work full time, night duty and things like that, it, it would be difficult. So I'd just do the basic commitment. Um, but then obviously when I was in retreat, I don't know how, but I managed to do like, like maybe a thousand or so a day. Or I think maybe at one point I got up to two thousand. But it, you know, I don't know how what the quality was. But you know, it was really different when I did intensive. You could see the the lamb rim, you know, impermanence, precious human rebirth, and um, in renunciation. You could feel that these these are things I really need to, to realize. I mean, just, I got to feel a little bit of the quality of, of the Lam Rim. I went back to England and I trained as a nurse. I realized that my practice was out there with people, caring for them. They were, they're the priority. If I have spent time doing my practice in the morning, then I go to work. My heart is really so much more open. And I, I'm focused on them. Otherwise, you know, I can be a little bit more interested in me. I must go and get my breakfast or whatever. Um, but I also think that the, the work helps to open my heart as well. I, actually, it works both ways. So my practice helps my work, but my, wor my work helps my practice. I see so much suffering in that job. It, it's, it's hard work, but yet because I have the Dharma, there's a bigger perspective, and I, and and I can do prayers for people. So when I come home, which is really important, I feel like it's my duty, you know, as as a Buddhist, you know, for for, for me as a, trying to develop bodhicitta, that I pray for all my patients that they will become enlightened soon. So at the end of the day, I do Vajrasattva. Um, 
to purify everything. So I try to think about everything I've done in the day that's negative karma, but also try to expand that, that that's not just today, that's many times this life, many times in many lives. So I try to really expand that and then um, do the Vajrasat for meditation, to, to recitation and um, try to make a promise to not do those things for as, as much time as I feel I can. And then um, I dedicate. And I try to do a dedication that ex- it includes um, all the people that I care for in, in the hospital, family, friends, and I try to also to expand it to as many people I can think of, because I think it's something very important about focusing on individuals in the dedication. Um, but obviously I use the dedication um, for all beings. I'd love to do my practice, I really do. And I feel so sad when I can't spend so much time on it. It makes me feel really sad. And I've noticed when, when I've had lots going on in my life and I haven't been able to do my practice, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not a happy person. And um, I also don't like doing my practice as much which is quite interesting. And when I have time and I do my practice, I'm a happier person.